Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Ryan. I'm a PhD student at UNSW Sydney, and today I'm going to present I Explain Autism, an interactive system for eye tracking data analysis and deep neural network interpretation for autism spectrum disorder diagnosis. Just a brief outline of today's talk, I'm going to introduce the research aims and objectives, followed by the methodology. I'll present the I Explain Autism interface and discuss the limitations, our ongoing work, and finally, conclusion. Autism spectrum disorders, or ASD, are neurological disorders characterized by deficits in cognitive skills, social and communicative behaviors. They are currently diagnosed through manual coding of behaviors, mainly by clinicians. In Australia, 1 in 70 people, or around 354,000, are on the spectrum. In our current review of related literature, we found that different biological and behavioral markers can be quantified using computer vision. These markers include magnetic resonance imaging, facial expression and emotion, eye gaze data, motor control movement, stereotype behaviors, and finally a combination of any of these. In this talk, I'm just going to focus on how eye tracking data can be used for ASD diagnosis. Recently, deep neural networks have seen tremendous progress in their ability to diagnose autism. However, they are often seen as black boxes by physicians unfamiliar with it. That's why in this research, we're going to present eye explain autism and discuss a sample scenario where clinicians can analyze eye tracking data, perform automated diagnosis, and interpret DNN predictions. In this talk, I'm not going to focus on clinical protocol and training. Please refer to the paper for more information. In general, there are 17 typically developing and 17 ASD individuals, and we computed for the difference of fixations per frame to come up with a visualization like this. We train a rapid end-to-end CNC prediction model to then predict those difference of fixation maps. Once the model has been trained, we upsample the data from the um, LSTM output and then extracted features from the fixation locations recorded during training. We then appended k number of fixations, which empirically we found that k equals 13 would yield the optimal performance in terms of specificity, sensitivity, and accuracy when um, we use a support vector machine to identify autism and typically developing. Now for the I explain autism interface, here is the website. On the top of the screen, you'll see the control panel, which would allow you to load an eye tracking data, load stimulus, switch between the visualization and the statistics tab, sort fixation, and do an automated prediction. I'll start off by loading a stimulus and loading an eye tracking data file from an autistic individual. Here you can see in the middle is the visualization tab, which would allow you to view the stimulus and as well as view the recorded fixation shown here by a green rectangle. You can also visualize the ASD heat map, which is the aggregate of all the ASD samples during training, as well as the TD heat map, which is a typically developing, and the difference of fixation heat map. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see the interactive timeline, which shows the chronological sequence of all the recorded fixations. When you hover into a fixation, you'll see a randomly sampled ASD and TD um, sample. And when you click to a fixation, the visualization tab will jump to that recorded fixation. You can perform automated diagnosis by clicking the predict button. And this button is connected to a Cherry Pie server which contains the model that I just discussed before. To further analyze and interpret the prediction, you can click the sort fixation buttons, which we'll sort all the fixations by feature importance. So when you analyze the difference of fixation maps of the top five fixations, you'll see that the recorded fixations or the green rectangles lie on the ASD heat map. You can further analyze the eye tracking data using the statistics tabs and comparing them to a pre-computed values of the samples seen during training. Now the limitations of this is that we use a relatively small data set of about 34 individuals and we only evaluated only one saliency prediction model. Our ongoing work includes incorporating severity and treatment response prediction, providing flexibility to use different models for prediction, and finally an evaluation with clinicians. So I want to acknowledge our collaborators from Unisobi Psychiatry, the children and their families for their participation, and that's it. Thank you.